So which side are you on? Is AI a climate weapon or is it a tool? Is it gonna solve climate change or is it consuming too much energy and water? This framing is terrible. It's a false dichotomy that pits speculative benefits against real impacts. And that's not even the worst part. It's distracting from a much bigger issue, the systemic harms of its use. I'm going to tell you why we need guardrails, not more tech. But who am I to say this? Ex-Microsoft responsible AI, I built tech behind ChatGPT, and I led green AI at Microsoft. And more importantly, I was wrong three times. <laughs> and I'm not alone. When I joined Microsoft in 2020, I was naive. I sought to use AI for planetary good, and I sought to build sustainable AI. I helped create a movement called Green Software Engineering. And we made tremendous progress in efficiency and measurement and reduction. But guess what? Emissions still climbed. You see, here's the paradox. Efficiency leads to more consumption, not less. The same way that we thought steam engine breakthroughs might reduce our coal use, and now our entire society is hooked on fossil fuels. This was my first mistake. I fixated on obvious technical challenges, the direct impacts of AI, but I ignored the systemic harms. Next, I set to use AI for sustainability. I even co-authored Microsoft's white paper, Accelerating Sustainability with AI. But here's what it doesn't tell you. AI for sustainability is mostly speculative. We already have the tools we need to solve climate change. This was my second mistake. I helped create a mythology of AI as a force for good. It's based on magical thinking. It's distracting from the very real harms that are happening today. Next, in my quest for impact, I sought the biggest customers. I began working with fossil fuel companies to try and make them better. Now, you're probably wondering, what does big tech have to do with big oil? Well, in the era of cheap and abundant renewable energy, oil companies need to do things like fracking and offshore drilling to stay competitive. And they rely on AI to do this. It helps them analyze and find more oil. So much so that finding and extracting more oil is actually one of the biggest use cases of AI today. <laughs> and big tech has been throwing big oil a lifeline for years. And big tech has a cognitive dissonance because publicly they have sustainability ambitions. And there's great work happening inside the company. But behind closed doors, leadership is calling this game changing to make the future of oil and gas brighter than ever. We did the math. We compared the additional emissions from just two projects of many against our entire operational footprint. Yes, this includes AI data centers. All of the good we were doing was washed away many times over. So I realized how a tool is used, the harms, matters so much more than what your tool runs on or the good things you might be able to do with it. It's like I was building a more efficient lighter, promoting its positive uses, but I didn't realize that one of the biggest uses was by an arsonist to burn our houses down. Now, employees have had this concern for years, since at least 2018. My partner and I brought them together. We co-authored an influential memo, and we presented this to the senior leadership at the company. And they agreed with us, with almost everything. It was very promising, they made big promises, and we rallied thousands of employees behind us. But three years later, despite all of our best efforts, almost nothing came to pass. This was my third mistake. I thought voluntary corporate behavior change might be enough to mitigate the harms of AI, but it never will, because the short-term profit motive will always override your good intention. There is no accountability, there is no transparency. My partner and I concluded that we had done everything practically that we could from within. And to be most effective, we needed to be pushing from the outside. So we resigned. We are co-founding the Enabled Emissions Campaign. <laughs> We're building a coalition to advocate for guardrails that truly align technology with climate science. And look, there's a lot going on right now. It's easy to get distracted, just to zoom in, to stay focused on your piece of the puzzle. But when we do that, we don't make policy that aligns with our self-interest. And I was wrong three times, and I'm not alone, and I need your help to fix this. Don't fall for the same tricks that I did. Now look, you don't even have to agree with me about climate change, but pick your issue. There's are so many to choose from. And then zoom out. Think about how you are being made complicit within a bad system and start to talk about what guardrails we need to put in place to ensure that these tools build a future we actually want and are not weaponized against us. So please, join me in this act of conscious moral rebellion, because there is eternal beauty in seeking truth and fighting harm despite the risk. It's not enough to simply stand for a solution. 
That's a band-aid. We need to get to the root cause. We must all vehemently fight back against the harms. Thank you.